Hey, what is up, friend and fellow anti-netter? It is Scott Shepard here on a Wednesday at 12.27 p.m. Now, I just shot this video, and what I'm going to do right now is walk you through it. What we're gonna do is very simple. It's the basics, it's the fundamentals. I am going to show you precisely how Nicholas Lumen read books, how he ingested books before he developed them into main cards and installed them into his Zettelkasten. Now, here is what we are going to do. You can see in the bottom right corner, I have a four by six inch card. It's roughly four by six inches. Uh, this one is actually an A6 size card, which is the European standard and basically their analogous version of a four by six inch card. And I did this because I'm crazy and I actually wanted to use the same exact size, which is just millimeters in difference that Nicholas Lumen used. So anyway, what you are seeing right here is I'm writing the author's last name. And uh, it didn't dawn on me until I actually started writing this card that I could not have possibly chosen <laughs> a more difficult last name for an author to uh, jot down and show you. But anyway, as you can see, it's Nakladova Iveka. And what I'm then writing is the title of this chapter in this book. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, Johann Amos Comenius, Early Modern Metaphysics of Knowledge and Ars Exerpendi. Now, this format ascribes to and follows the uh, kind of the, the bibliography uh, format that you find in the back pages of books that actually have a bibliography. I'm not talking about like the pop science, pop uh, psychology books uh, today, or, you know, how-to books, nothing against them, where they have like zero bibliography references listed. I'm talking about books that uh, actually have uh, bibliography references listed in the back. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, you can find this format, you know, the Chicago Manual of, of Style uh, has a format, and you could just Google, you know, bibliog bibliography format. This is essentially what it looks like. Now, uh, so what you can see there is I have the Johann Amos Comenius uh, in quotes. This is boring stuff, by the way, uh, but it is very, very important. And um, as you can see, I put like a little, you'll see it in a second here. Uh, I, I, I like to underline the title too. Uh, that's just something that allows me to find it faster when I'm surfing through this in my bib box. Now, look at those little, uh, those little, triangles around Ars Exerpendi. That's my little convention, my my uh, my convention for actually signifying italics. So that's just for me. Anyway, um, working through this, you will, you will see that I'm then writing in Forgetting Machines. That's the title of this book is called Forgetting Machines. So this is a chapter in Forgetting Machines. And even though this stuff seems very boring, uh, if you have read a classic book on reading by Mortimer Adler called How to Read a Book, he actually really emphasizes writing down the title and even the subtitles. It slows down the mind so that you can actually get ready to ingest the book that you're about to read. And also you'll no notice some subtleties uh, when you are uh, going to read the book, especially writing down the subtitles uh, that you otherwise may have overlooked. And Adler, in his book, How to Read a Book, uh, you know, identifies and, you know, even uses an example that uh, most biologists, they don't even know the true title of, you know, Darwin's seminal book on uh, natural selection and fitness. Most people, even biologists, say, oh, it's called The Origin of Species. But that is actually not what it is titled. It is titled On the Origin of the Species. It was essentially Darwin's recollections and reflections on the origin of species. He was not claiming, oh, here is the origin of species. He was just saying, on the matter of the, on the origin of species, here are my findings and here is what uh, I have learned. So anyway, that gives you a, a little nice taste or a glimpse of that. Now, after we're done with this rather seemingly boring part of writing down the bibliography information, um, there's one last detail you'll see I write down. I write down the date, the year. This is a huge thing that a lot of people also overlook. They, writing down the year actually 
reminds you of when it was written and you know can prime you to um, the fact that, oh, maybe there's new things that have developed since it was written. And then the very last thing I do is I create a little code. Um, this is something covered like more advanced and especially in my book, I cover this and also in my videos and wherever I you know talk about the full anti-net Zettelkasten. This is a little code that allows me to later on you know, tag and identify this source. Um, after this, this is the last step. I just flip over the card and it's time to get to the actual reading part of using a Zettelkasten and reading like Lumen. Okay, now that we have the bibliography information on the front of the card, I call these cards bib cards, by the way, uh, I'm gonna show you the actual process of taking what are called bib notes. These are brief notes and observations from your reading. Now the bib card is essentially a staging post, a staging idea area for what you're gonna fully develop in the next phase of using an anti-net Zettelkasten, which is actually creating main cards and elaborating on these bib notes that you're about to see here. Now you can see in the left, I put a 199 that signifies the page number from which this idea comes from so that I can later cite it and footnote it. So 199 is the page number. And then you can see me, I write spiritual and then underline it because I wanna put this under the, the idea of the spiritual aspect of using a, a, an analog Zettelkasten, which I call an anti-net. And uh, this really involves what Lumen called the, the uh, ghost in the box aspect. There's almost this higher level aspect to knowledge development. And you can see this is what something that uh, is mentioned on this page of the book. He talks about essentially the overall goal is uh, to get in touch with your inner self and then to move higher to get in touch with the ultimate goal, knowledge of God himself, knowledge of all divine things, knowledge of the universe. And you know, this is kind of the idea that popped up and I wanna elaborate on this in the main cards. So that is a bib note. You've just seen it, that's a bib card. And this is precisely how Nicholas Lumen read. You're welcome.